You are listening to episode four of British Comedy Connections, written and presented by me, Jasmine Tony. Episode four, Dad's Army. Dad's Army, broadcast on the BBC from 1968 to 1977, ran for nine series and 80 episodes, regularly earning very high ratings and often hitting the 18 million viewer mark for a single episode. Dad's Army followed the lives of the British Home Guard during the Second World War. The Home Guard, a group of local volunteers who weren't right for serving in the military and Mannering and his officers are situated in the fictional seaside town of Warmington on Sea on England's south coast. Captain Mannering's catchphrase, you stupid boy, was voted one of the top 10 greatest put downs on TV by the readers of the Radio Times and the character himself was ranked 21st on Channel 4's list of the 100 greatest TV characters. Pompous and commanding Mannering was played by Arthur Lowe, the wise and ever ironic Sergeant Arthur Wilson by John de la Mejure, local butcher and ex drummer boy Lance Corporal Jack Jones by Clive Dunn, and the immature mother's boy and youngest member Private Frank Pike, don't tell him Pike, by the fabulous Ian Lavender. Dad's Army was written by prolific British scriptwriters Jimmy Perry and David Croft, who, chronologically, also wrote It Ain't Half Hot Mum, 1974 to 1981, Heidi High, 1980 to 1988, and the fantastic You Rang My Lord. You Rang My Lord, broadcast between 1990 and 1993, again on the BBC, the pilot episode aired two years earlier, good old production delays there, centred around the house of an aristocratic family in the 1920s and the entire series was filmed, you guessed it, my favourite, in front of a live studio audience. Mega unconventionally, each episode of My Lord was a very unique 50 minutes long instead of the standard 28. Another unconventional decision by the writers was to have individual storylines and events continue episode to episode in more of a soap opera style. If you didn't know or have never thought about it, think of every other British sitcom. Each episode begins back at neutral, back at zero. Then the events unfold and conclude within each episode. It's the most distinctive feature of any British sitcom and I love that Milord brazenly broke the mould. Essentially, the comedy is found within the various relationships between the upper class and their servants, not unlike Upstairs Downstairs, as well as Butler Alf, Paul Shane's, scheming and footman James, Geoffrey Holland's attempts to thwart it. You Rang My Lord's comedy also came from the clashes of politics between James and Alf, the delightful adultery triangle between Lord Maldrum, Lady Agatha and Sir Ralph, and the adorable developing love affair between Alf and Mrs Lipton, the cook. The series starred, amongst others, Paul Shane as Alf, Geoffrey Holland as James, Sue Pollard as Ivy, Donald Hewitt as Lord Maldrum, Michael Knowles as Teddy Maldrum, and Sissy Maldrum, the masculine-style dressing oldest daughter, was played magnificently by Catherine Rabbit. Catherine Rabbit, a former girlfriend of Prince Andrew, I know, right, was also a member of Arlene Phillips' groundbreaking dance group Hot Gossip. Hot Gossip were quite successful in their day, once backing Sarah Brightman on her single I Lost My Heart to a Starship Trooper. June. Catherine also performed with Hot Gossip on the absolutely fabulous and utterly brilliant The Kenny Everett Show. Kenny Everett, born Maurice James Christopher Cole, was a British comedian, DJ and TV presenter who we lost far too soon in April 1995 to HIV. Kenny's big break came when he sent a tape to the BBC in 1962, introducing himself and asking if there was anything he could present. Kudos for balls there, Kenny. The BBC offered him the presenting job on the BBC Light programme, the show which preceded BBC Radio 2, but he declined in favour of the more freedom-giving world of pirate radio. Outspoken and hilarious, think a camp, more surreal Frankie Boyle. Kenny often got fired from his industry jobs, quickly moving on to the next one until his outspoken comedy got him thrown out again. Kenny's best friend in the show business world was none other than the legend that is Freddie Mercury and Kenny was a regular visitor to Mercury in the final months of his life. Kenny Everett was an absolute British comedy superstar and his influences are felt from generation to generation of comedy actors and writers. 
Kenny Everett's personality and presenting meant he was perfect for the early panel shows around at the time of his self-titled show, and he appeared on so many shows, including Celebrity Squares and the brilliant Blankety Blank. Blankety Blank, a British comedy panel show staple, originally ran from January 1979 to March 1990. It was first hosted by Terry Wogan, then Les Dawson. A revival hosted by the extremely attractive Paul O'Grady, in character as Lily Savage, I don't fancy Lily Savage, aired from 1977 to 1999 and then from 2001 to 2002. Blankety Blank is actually based on the American game show Match Game. That's where the RuPaul Drag Race Snatch Game comes from. Love RuPaul. On Christmas Eve 2016, a one-off Christmas special aired, presented by David Walliams. David Walliams, best known for his work with Matt Lucas on the BBC comedy series Rock Profile, Little Britain and Come Fly With Me, has been a judge on the ITV talent show competition Britain's Got Talent since 2012. Walliams also wrote and starred in his own sitcom, Big School, in 2013, starred in the film for TV Capturing Mary, the BBC series Partners in Crime, and wrote and starred in his own sketch comedy series, Walliams and Friends. He was also great friends with comedy queen and absolute goddess, Carolina Hearn. Appointed officer of the Order of the British Empire in 2017, Walliams also starred in the BBC series PG Woodhouse-based Blandings. Blandings is a British comedy television series adapted by Guy Andrews and was first broadcast on BBC One on the 13th of January 2013. Set in 1929, Lord Emsworth resides at Blandings Castle with his sister Connie and son Freddie. House guests are constant as well as love-struck nieces and their on and off again boyfriends. Reluctantly offering to help is his long-suffering but essentially loyal butler, Beach. The entire series was filmed in Northern Ireland and the main cast consisted of Peter Pettigrew, Timothy Spall, as Lord Emsworth, Jack Farthing as dim-witted Freddie, Mark Williams and then Tim Vine as Sebastian Beach and the thin-lipped comedy lady giant that is Jennifer Saunders as Connie Keeble. Jennifer Saunders, best known for creating and starring in 90s stalwart sitcom giant Absolutely Fabulous, often works with her professional and personal bestie, Dawn French, whom she met at the Central School of Speech and Drama. In 2006, Saunders, together with Abigail Wilson, wrote the WI-based women's girls sitcom Jam and Jerusalem, with Saunders playing the role of Caroline Martin. Filmed in North Taunton, Devon, and set in the small fictional West Country town of Clatterford St Mary, the show was based around Sal, a local practice nurse played by the mighty Mrs Royal, Sue Johnston. Jennifer Saunders, who moved to Devon in 1999, created the show out of her intense frustration at the stereotypical portrayal of Devonians on TV, as well as her deep-seated desire to work with Sue Johnston. Jam in Jerusalem was one of a handful of shows that the BBC recorded in the then-dynamic HD format. The show's theme tune is a cover of the Kinks hit The Village Green Preservation Society, performed by Kate Rusby. Saunders and husband Aid Edmondson's three daughters all star in the series as well. Ella plays a folk singer and Beattie and Freya play Saunders' character's daughters, named Beattie and Freya, respectively. Jam and Jerusalem also stars Dawn French as Rosie Bales, Joanna Lumley as Delilah Stagg, Pauline McLean, cup of tea father, as Reverend Hillary, and comedy panel show favourite David Mitchell as Dr James Vine. David James Stuart Mitchell currently works for the BBC as a team captain on the TV series Would I Lie to You and on BBC Radio 4 as host of the quiz show The Unbelievable Truth. He is one half of the comedy duo Mitchell and Webb, I well fancy the latter, starring in Peep Show and Back Together. Mitchell is a frequent guest on other panel shows such as QI, Mock the Week, Have I Got News for You, The Big Fat Quiz of the Year and 8 Out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. He also regularly contributes comment articles in broadsheet newspapers The Observer and The Guardian. Forever busy, Mitchell also wrote the entire Series 5 of BBC Two Impressionist sketch show Dead Ringers, narrated the reality show Beauty and the Geek, presented four series of the online video show David Mitchell's Soapbox. That was back in the day, I loved that I did. He also did his bit for safety, providing the voiceover for a £1 million government advert for Frank warning about the dangers of cocaine, and for the Driving Standards Agency's Highway Code. In 2016, he began starring as the central character William Shakespeare in the historical comedy, like I've said before, a rare breed, Upstart Crow. Upstart Crow is a British sitcom which premiered in May 2016 on BBC Two, 
as part of the commemorations of the 400th anniversary of the death of William Shakespeare. The title Upstart Crow is part of a critique of Shakespeare by his rival and peer Robert Greene. An upstart crow, beautified with our feathers. See, comedy can be cultural. Written by Ben Alton and set in 1592, the actual year of Green's quotations, onwards. Events in each episode of Upstart Crow always allude to one or more of Shakespeare's plays and nearly always end with Will discussing said events with the other characters, deciding whether or not they're good enough to put into one of his future plays. The series makes good use of Shakespearean references, such as asides and soliloquies, and also references Blackadder and The Office. Each episode always involves running gags such as casual sexism and modern motorway frustrations, and will frequently claim in credit for common turns of phrases that in real life are often misattributed to Shakespeare. I really like Upstart Crow, as I do Blackadder. It must be something to do with a history-comedy crossover. In February 2020, Upstart Crow the play opened, with Mitchell and others reprising their roles. Writer Ben Alton insisted in interviews at the time that it was an entirely original excursion, not at all a TV adaption. Upstart Crow starred, along with Mitchell, Liza Tarbuck as Anne Hathaway, Harry Enfield as John Shakespeare, Mark Heap as Robert Greene, and as Shakespeare's mother Mary Arden, Paula Wilcox. Paula Wilcox is best known for her role as Chrissy in the hugely popular ITV sitcom Man About the House from 1973 to 1976, and has also starred in a plethora of British series including Corrie, CBBC's The Queen's Nose, remember that, Emma Dale, Boomers, Peak Practice, uh, Still Open All Hours, and the massively underrated yet one of my very, very top ten British sitcoms, The Smoking Room. If you've heard of it, I'm impressed. The Smoking Room is a British comedy television sitcom written by the then newbie writer Brian Dooley, who won a BAFTA for the second series. The only reason there was no commission series three of The Smoking Room is very simple. England's smoking ban. As the entire series is set in an internal smoking room of an office building, the BBC couldn't be seen to be promoting now illegal activity and therefore the series had to end. Only occasional glimpses of the world beyond the room are ever seen, and even then it's always through misty glass. Although each episode has its own unique storyline, overarching storylines link the series and each episode magnificently, the most prominent being the gradual revelation of Robin's sexuality to the other characters and his completely unrequited infatuation with post-room Ben. The Smoking Room has ten characters, although not all of them appear in each episode. The only one that does is Robin, played by Robert Webb. The occasional non-smoker sometimes drops by the room and the camaraderie between the smokers soon makes them feel slightly alienated. I think The Smoking Room is a perfect example of a British sitcom and should be broadcast on prime time to gain new viewership. It really is brilliant. The series starred Robert Webb as Robin, Debbie Chazen as Annie, Jeremy Swift as Barry, Emma Kennedy as Heidi, Leslie Schofield as Len, and as Janet, the prudish, prim and proper personal assistant, Selina Griffiths. Selina Griffiths, the daughter of Michael Griffiths and Annette Crosby, trained at the Central School of Speech and Drama, and aside from the smoking room, is definitely best known for her performance as Pauline Maltby in the hugely successful ITV sitcom, Benidorm. Benidorm, created by Derren Litton and produced by Tiger Aspect for ITV, aired for 10 series from the 1st of February 2007 to the 2nd of May 2018. Benidorm is based around holidaymakers and staff at the all-inclusive hotel The Solana in Benidorm, Spain, over the course of a week each year. Usually the same people go back and the staff come to recognise and befriend the regulars. The pool scenes in Benidorm are filmed at the Sol Pelicans Ocas Hotel, actually in Benidorm, and the reception area and the salon scenes are filmed in a studio set in a building opposite Benidorm Palace. Throughout its very successful run, Benidorm won a variety of prestigious television awards, including five NTAs, one BAFTA and three TV Choice Awards. Benidorm starred, amongst others, Abigail Cruttenden as Kate Whedon, Johnny Vegas as The Oracle, Kenny Island, Victoria Wood there, as Donald Stewart, Sheridan Smith as Brandy, Tim Healy as Les, Sherry Hewson as Joyce Temple Savage and the fabulous Steve Pemberton as Mick Garvey. Steve Pemberton co-wrote and appeared in the sitcom Psychoville, as well as the absolutely incredible but not technically comedy, although in part definitely black comedy, Inside Number 9, which, as a quick aside, provides us with, in my opinion, the greatest half an hour of British television we've ever seen. 
the episode Bernie Clifton's Dressing Room. If you haven't seen it, turn me off and go and watch it. Trust me, it's the best half an hour of British TV ever created. It's on iPlayer. Anyway, I digress. Pemberton's other TV credits include Doctor Who, Blackpool, Shameless, Whitechapel, Happy Valley, Map and Lucia, but he's obviously best known for being a member of the League of Gentlemen. The League of Gentlemen comedy troupe was formed in 1995 and in 1999 became a surreal British sitcom which lasted for three series broadcast on the BBC. The series was set in the fictional town in the north of England, Royston Valley, and it's widely thought that the majority of the characters, as well as the town itself, are based on Pemberton's hometown of Chorley. The character, Herr Lip, is thought to be based on a hospital chaplain he encountered after suffering a heart attack in Germany. Papa Lazarus's speech is inspired by his old landlord, and Ollie Plimsolls is based on a community theatre actor Rhys Shearsmith, another member of the League, had previously worked with. The four members of the League of Gentlemen are Steve Pemberton, Jeremy Dyson, Rhys Shearsmith and Mark Gattis. Mark Gattis is an actor, comedian, screenwriter, director, producer and writer who randomly played Tycho Nestor's in Game of Thrones. So there you go. Outside of the League, Gattis wrote for the 2001 revival of Randall and Hopkirk Deceased. I loved that. Script edited Little Britain, guest starred in Spaced, 99. In 2010, in Funland, he was featured on the Independent on Sunday's pink list of influential gay people in the UK. He once built a Victorian laboratory in his North London home as the fulfilment of a childhood dream. Fancy. In 1998, Mark Gattis starred in the four-part black comedy crime drama on Radio 4, In the Red, which also starred Geoffrey McGiven. Geoffrey McGiven, a film and television actor as well as a comedian, played Ford Prefect in the radio series and subsequent LP releases of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on BBC Radio 4, then reprising the role for the four new series between 2004 and 2018. McGiven appeared in the first series of cult comedy show Big Train in 1998, played the supreme ruler in BBC Two's sci-fi comedy Hyperdrive from 2006 to 2007, and appeared as Professor John Mycroft in the BBC Two science sitcom Lab Rats. A stalwart of British comedy, McGiven has also starred in A Bit of Fry and Laurie, Peep Show, Blackadder, The Third, Back, and the legend of 90s television that was, and this is a bit of a curveball, Noel's House Party. Noel's House Party was a BBC Lights entertainment comedy series hosted by good old Noel Edmonds. The series was set in a massive mansion in the fictional village of Crinkley Bottom, innuendo heaven there, and ran from the 23rd of November 1991 to the 26th of March 2000 on BBC One. It was broadcast live for eight series in the primetime Saturday evening slot. I bloody loved it. In 2010, Noel's House Party was voted the best Saturday night TV show of all time by Channel 4. Regular segments were plenty, including the famous gotcha segment of the show, which gave rise to the fabulously attractive and extremely eloquent Mr Blobby. Originally titled The Gotcha Oscars, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science threatened legal action against the show and the award was even redesigned to dispel any talk of similarities. Notable celebrity victims of the gotchas included Babs Windsor, Jill Dando, Dave Lee Travis, Eddie Large, uh, Status Quo and even the Queen Park Rangers Football Club. Other regular features in Noel's House Party included The Lyric Game, Wait Till I Get You Home, Grab a Grand, NTV and the infamous Gunge Tank. Carried over from the Noel Edmonds Saturday Roadshow, the gunge tank usually gunged celebrities and unpopular members of the public, with the gunging taking place at the very end of the show. Gunged celebrities, that's a weird word, gunged, gunged, gunged celebrities were too numerous to mention, notably including Piers Morgan, Nigel Mansell, Jeremy Clarkson, The Hoff, Philip Schofield, The Chuckle Brothers, Ulrika Johnson and Carol Vorderman. Sometimes celebrity guests posed as residents of Crinkley Bottom, including Michael Crawford, Vicky Michelle and the classic comedy actor Frank Thornton. Frank Thornton, born in London in 1921, was evacuated during the Second World War along with the rest of his drama school, the London School of Dramatic Art, and his first professional acting job was a touring production of four plays in Ireland. Frank Thornton played Herbert Truly Love in British comedy staple Last of the Summer Wine, but is perhaps best known for playing Captain Peacock in Are You Being Served and its sequel, Grace and Favour. Are You Being Served, broadcast on the BBC for 10 series and 69 episodes, I swear that was deliberate, aired between the 8th of November 1972 and the 1st of April 1985. Set in London, 
The series centred around the staff of the retail ladies and gentlemen's clothing departments of the fictional department store chain Grace Brothers in the flagship store. Created by Jeremy Lloyd and David Croft, Are You Being Served was not only a massive success here, but also in Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the Republic of Ireland. The initial idea for the series came from Lloyd's brief period in the early 1950s, working at the clothing store Simpsons of Piccadilly. The cast of the show performed it in character for a stage sketch on the BBC One programme Variety on the 19th of June 1976. Of the original cast, only Frank Thornton, John Inman, Wendy Richard, Nicholas Smith and Molly Sugden appeared in all 69 episodes. Molly Sugden and her co-star John Inman became proper cult figures in America because of their roles in the iconic British sitcom. Molly Sugden, born in good old West Yorkshire, was a prolific and altogether powerful British comedy stalwart. Before Are You Being Served, Molly starred as Mrs Crispin in the sitcom Hugh and I, Mrs Hutchinson in The Liver Birds and Auntie Minnie in the classic sitcom Steptoe and Son. Steptoe and Son, written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, is a sitcom about a father and son rag and bone business. For international listeners, and believe it or not, you're there, rag and bone men collected unwanted household items from people's homes and then sold them on to merchants. Traditionally, this was a task performed on foot with a scavenged item slung over the shoulder in a sack bag. The two main characters of Steptoe and Son are father, Albert Steptoe, played by Wilfred Bramble, and son, Harold Steptoe, played by Harry H. Corbett. Albert Steptoe is your classic dirty old man, totally set in his ways and full of British cynicism and a total inability to express or maybe even feel his emotions. In 2000, Steptoe and Son was ranked number 44 on the British Film Institute's 100 Greatest British Television Programmes and Albert Steptoe was ranked 39th in Channel 4's 100 Greatest TV Characters in 2001. During its original broadcast run in the 60s and 70s, Steptoe and Son was seen, and indeed was, particularly radical for its time, with the majority of British comedies at the time relying on slapstick, innuendo and good old farce, I don't like farce, for the sources of laughter. Standing out from the rest, Steptoe and Son instead brought a great deal of social realism to comedy, with its characters being not only working class but extremely poor. With language that we can politely describe as uh, earthy, The dialogue massively contrasted with the refined British voices heard on TV at the time. Steptoe and Son also often utilised Cockney rhyming slang unheard of in other British sitcoms. Impressive now, it was extremely different and even more impressive at the time, and the father and son duo and their incredibly complicated and intense relationship displaying deeper levels of comedy and poignancy that had been seen before. The opening titles were never standard, just that each episode often opened with a shot of Hercules, the Steptoe's horse. Steptoe and Son is a trading name of the rag and bone business, but the son is not Harold as widely believed, but Albert. Aside from the two main characters, the two also have a large extended family, who intermittently appear, including Molly as Aunt Minnie, Auntie May, played by Rose Hill, and George A. Cooper as Uncle Arthur. Other famous faces popping up in Steptoe and Son include Patricia Routledge, Mrs. Bucket, as Madame Fontana in the episode Seance in a Wet Rag and Bone Yard, Joanna Lumley as Bunty in the episode Loath Story and in the episode Walla Walla Cat's Meat as The Vert was one John Peyton Laurie and John Laurie is best known for his role as Private Fraser in Dad's Army! British Comedy Connections was written and presented by me, Jasmine Tony. See you soon!